Number one, let's look at where these children is a character of chemistry. Many times children who have to work way too hard to keep their nervous system under control, to keep from having meltdowns, to stay focused, we come to the conclusion that it's totally behavioral, that they're having to work this hard because they're just not trying. And we consider it a character issue. And we do more Bible studies on the beaver for diligence and on character, and they're always very good. That's always a good thing to do. But I want to look at another paradigm today. This is what I learned when I work with these wonderful, bright, struggling kids in my resource room, that very often it's chemistry. Is it character or chemistry? Dr. Sidney Walker in his clinic in California says kids act how they feel. So let's look at the relationship between what's going on with the brain and the body, with character and what their body chemistry is looking like. So let's look at some serotonin. The neuro serotonin is a neurotransmitter that's very plentiful. When we have enough serotonin, we are of a relaxed mind. And we have a sense of well-being. We handle stress easily. We fall asleep easily, stay asleep all night, don't have nightmares, are night terrors. When we have enough serotonin, we easily stay focused. When we have enough serotonin, our impulsivity is controlled. When we have enough serotonin, we see the world as more positive than negative. We know that antidepressants work by releasing serotonin. They don't make more. We're going to talk today about how to make more serotonin. Ritalin works by releasing serotonin. We're not going to talk about using Ritalin. We're going to talk about why something like Ritalin works to help focus. Because it releases serotonin, we're going to see how we can make more serotonin. So if a child is low on serotonin, let's think of our children with sensory processing problems where everything bothers them, tags and noises and have to put their hands over their ears, they don't easily handle stress, do they? So serotonin is such an important neurotransmitter, we ask ourselves if they're low on it, why? Well, we know that one, the foods, number one food is essential fatty acids, and then we say, where is this important neurotransmitter manufactured? Well, we know from Dr. Michael Gershon's research, over 95% of this serotonin is manufactured in the gut. So the gut releases it and then creates it, manufactures it, and the pond center of the brain releases it. So then we're going to say, oh, what did we do to that child's gut? What did we do to the manufacturing plant? Dr. William Crook, in his book, um, Helping the Hyperactive Child, finds that over 85% of children who later on have attention and behavior and sensory processing problems had multiple ear infections when young. It's not the ear infections, it's the antibiotic use that changed the, the gut flora. And that's what we talk about in this CD set. How the child's gut flora gets changed and how then the manufacturer's serotonin is greatly impacted and how we can reverse that at home. After getting my master's degree in special education and working there for many years, I went on and became a nutritionist because I found there's a trump card. There is something that is more powerful than all the different learning strategies I could come up with, and that is how the child feels, what's going on in his nervous system. I saw that many of the students in my class were on medication. All the medications were aimed at releasing and increasing the amount of serotonin available through this nervous system. They said, all right, let's look at what's going on with this and began studying where this is manufactured. And that's the research we talk about in this CD set, but more importantly, what to do about it at home. So let's just look real fast at some of the physical symptoms of a child does have this Easter fungus overgrowth. If they ever had thrush as an infant, that means the white, white tongue, that means they have the, um, the spore in there and that wants to overgrow and that tends to greatly reduce the amount of serotonin available. If they ever had an allergy to antibiotics, that means that they have, tend to have that yeast overgrowth. Athlete's foot. If we just pick it up once in a while, it goes away in a week, it's just topical. But if it keeps coming back, it's coming from the gut and that's affecting their behavior. This yeast and fungus puts off a toxin called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde causes the nervous system to be in disarray and disequilibrium and makes them spacey, irritable, upset. Rashes, the eczema, cradle cap, 
diaper rash, lactose intolerance are almost all physical symptoms that this child has, a, has an upset that is causing their behavior to respond in the way that makes it look like it's a character issue. How does it affect behaviorally? Well, let's look at the next slide. Mood swings is how we see it. Spaciness, anger, irritability, aggression. These kids have many meltdowns. You'll find this child that you are walking on eggshells all the time. Inconsistent performance. Knows one day, forgets it the next. Inattention. These kids have memory problems. It looks like memory problems, but it's really, they're almost two doors down in their head playing with a friend. They're not engaging. Now look at you, it seems like they are, but in their head, they're not. Because of the toxins that are put off, off by this Easton fungus and causes their, their nervous system to have to react to every stimuli, everything distracts them. So they are oftentimes inappropriate behavior. Talking loudly is one of the big things we hear goes away right away. And oftentimes a depression, which is really in kids looks like an Eeyore. They see the world as more negative than positive. I don't have any friends, or that was unfair, or the statements they make all the time. The next slide says, why are some teenagers more susceptible to depression? Because they tend to be the ones that maybe are taking what we call acne medicine which is an antibiotic, which is a mold, and that completely changes their gut flora. So then they tend to get more depressed, want to listen to the loud rock music that has an off beat that is uh, very satisfying to the state of disequilibrium their nervous system is in. Sometimes it's just because their diet consists of pop, pop, pop tarts and so much sugar because you can never have antibiotics and have a yeast fungus overgrowth just by feeding it, inoculating yourself constantly with sugars and carbs. And sometimes they do that to themselves, and then we think they're just going through the teenage years. But no, they're going through a disequilibrium that you can change at home quite easily. Sometimes these symptoms look like they have SI, sensory integration or sensory processing dysfunction. These things are so easy to help at home. Let's look at some of them. If you have a child who is sensitive to loud noises, puts his hands over his ears all the time, dislikes being in a group because a group irritates his nervous system, even language is delayed, our food textures bother them, or they won't eat meat. Sometimes they chew on clothing. Not every child does this once in a while. We mean a wet shirt and wet sleeves. They're often a very selective eater. They are carbivores. All they want is cup of noodles, macaroni and cheese, rice, pasta, bread, mashed potatoes, carbs, 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 because carbs are feeding the yeast and fungus overgrowth, which is making them crave the carbs, which is causing the vicious cycle of behavior for them. Sometimes foods can't touch on the plate, they're so touchy. Transitions are very hard for these kids. Tags sometimes bother them. Or the socks have to be just right. You know if you have a child, you have to get different socks all the time with no seam. Because their nervous system is not cushioned, it's raw. It's overreacting to everything. We need our job is to calm down that nervous system and help them be able to handle that. When we do that, then we can begin teaching them anything. Then we could take care of if there are any other learning disabilities. But first, we need to get their nervous system under control. They grind their teeth at night. Or they don't, boys don't like to have their hair combed or washed. We mean the calling the social worker because they're just absolutely screaming. Our doctor visits very uncomfortable. Well, it's, we're not talking shots, but they even try to touch it with a stethoscope. And oh my goodness, one mom said, uh, did you, did you hear the angels saying my daughter went to the doctor and they just talked about the fish in the tank? And so those are the things that we see. So one of the things we know with kids who have sensory integration issues is that anxiety rules their day. And anxiety is a terrible thing to have.